So we have talked about different methods to activate an alcohol. We have used PBR3 or PCL3 or thionyl chloride, or we can use any of the uh, sulfonyl chloride to convert it into sulfonate esters. So once it is converted into an alcohol halide or sulfonate ester, it can be reacted with any nucleophile to convert it into the compound that we want. Okay, now the most important thing here is uh, looking into the stereochemistry of the reaction. So for the first reaction, where you reacted with PBR3 and then converted into alcohol halide, and then that alcohol halide when it is reacted with um, methoxide ion, it actually resulted in retention of the configuration. Look into this. You have wedged bond on both the sides, both the reactant and as well as the product. But when you look into the second reaction, where when you converted uh, an alcohol into a sulfonate ester using tosyl chloride and then reacted with a nucleophile, it actually inverted the configuration. Okay. You see that? Inverted the configuration. Here, the two wedge bonds are on opposite direction. Now, what is causing the inversion configuration in the second reaction and what is causing the retention in the first reaction? Now, for that, we needed to identify what mechanism is it going to go through. And in all of these, in both of these reactions, there is going to be SN2 reaction. Probably there might be double SN2 reaction, which is going to lead to the retention of the configuration. We will look into this in the next slide. Now let's see how these two reactions leads to two different products with different stereochemistry. Let's look into the mechanism. When we look into the mechanism, probably we'll have more idea whether it's going to be one SN2 reaction or it's going to be two SN2 reactions. If it's going to be two SN2 reactions, then it's going to be retention and configuration. Because with the first SN2 reaction, it's going to invert the configuration. And with the second SN2 reaction, it's going to do another inversion, which is going to be the, uh, the, the configuration of which is going to be exactly the same as the starting material. Now let's see for this reaction, PBR3, reaction of an alcohol with PBR3. Now the first step here is the alcohol is going to be converted into a good leaving group. So for which so I'm going to draw the PBR3, the alcohol with its lone pair of electrons is going to go attack the P and then the bromine is going to leave. Let's draw the structure out. And remember, you still have the hydrogen and then the PBR2. And this oxygen is going to be positively charged. And you have your pyridine, which goes and abstracts this hydrogen and neutralizes this positive charge on oxygen. Okay. And the product right here is going to be. So until now, there hasn't been any SN2 reaction. This is your product. Right, and a dashed wedge. Now your SN2 reaction happens where the Br- minus is going to go come in a direction that's opposite to that of the leaving group, and the leaving group is going to leave. Here is your leaving group. Okay, let's write down the product for this. So this is where your first SN2 reaction happened. Now what's the next reaction? You have to react it with CH3O minus, right? Now remember, this is again a nucleophile which needs to go attack in a direction that's opposite to that of the leaving group. Your new leaving group now here is bromine, okay? And your nucleophile will need to go and attack the carbon in this direction, okay? When it does so, it's going to give you the inverted configuration. So can you all see that whatever the configuration that you started with, that's what it's going to, you're going to have in the final step because it resulted in two SN2 reaction. Here is your first SN2 reaction. And with that, there is an inversion configuration that took place. And with the second SN2 reaction, there is a second inversion. And therefore, the, your final compound should have exactly the same configuration as what you started with. Now let's see what is happening in the second reaction. The second reaction, we have exactly the same alcohol, 
but here in this case it reacts with the tosyl chloride. Let's draw the structure for tosyl chloride. Here is the structure for tosyl chloride. Now what's the first step that's happening? Obviously, the electrons from the oxygen is going to go attack the sulfur, electropositive sulfur, and the Cl is going to leave, right? Now let's write down the product. And remember the hydrogen is still intact and it's going to have a and the oxygen is going to have a positive charge on it. Okay, and in the next step, the pyridine is going to act as a base which goes and grabs this hydrogen and neutralizes this positive charge. Okay, let's write down the product for that. So now you have created your sulfonate ester. Here is our sulfonate ester. Now in the next step, you want to react it with CH3O minus, right, which is your nucleophile. But this nucleophile is going to come in a direction that's opposite to the leaving group. Remember, this is going to be your leaving group. This is going to be your leaving group. This is going to be your tosylate ion. That's going to be the leaving group. And it's going to kick off the leaving group. And in this case, this is your SN2 reaction. And you will have let's write on the product have CH3 and then you have OCH3 here H and R. Okay. While in the first case you have two SN2 reactions. Here, there is only one SN2 reaction, and therefore, it resulted in an inversion in configuration here, whereas it resulted in the retention of configuration here because of the two SN2 reactions.